Hello and welcome back to the series on working with Spacey for the purposes of NER and the digital humanities. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, tackle two different problems that are kind of similar but kind of different. And that's what do you do with a trained good Spacey model? What do you do next? And the answer is that you package it. Now, there's two different ways that you're going to need to package this. The first way is going to be if you're just working with something that has cust or, uh, normal factories, normal pipelines, so things like NER, etc. The next thing that we're going to see in this video is what do you do when you're working with something like we saw in our Holocaust one that has custom functions in it like this. These are custom factories. The way in which you package it as one other step so that you can ensure that your, uh, that your model when saved to disk, we'll be able to have all these custom factories in it. So that's what we're going to see in this video. Let's jump right in. We're going to start with the Latin one. I'm not going to be talking about Latin at all. I'm using it as a case example because uh, this model doesn't have any custom functions, so it's a little easier to package. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create another folder. Uh, I always like to call mine packaged models so that I can keep them separate. If I pull the directory over here, we see that I now have that folder. So what we're going to do is we are going to open up command prompt in this directory. And if you notice, I've got I've got it in here with F um, on the F drive, Latin NER. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to package the model using uh, using Spacey. I'm going to put it over here so you can kind of see both side by side. What we need to do is we need to package the model using Spacey. Fortunately, there are some built in functions in Spacey for doing just this. And if you notice in my models folder, I've got the Latin underscore test. That's the model that we want to package. It's got the NER component and all of that. At this stage, it's probably good to, um, to work on a couple different things in your meta file. Your meta file contains all of the metadata on your model. So here, this is the language English. I know this is a Latin. Uh, Spacey doesn't come with a built-in blank Latin parser. Even in the Spacey documentation, they have like one little toy example of Latin, and they use the EN uh, to do the parsing. Uh, so the model, what are we going to call it? Well, let's just call it uh, Latin. Uh, Latin. Let's just call it Latin SM because it has no word vectors. And you can type in the version. You can type in the author name, email address, license, URL, all of that fun stuff that's associated with you as the creator of that model. So let's go back over here. We've got the metadata saved and that metadata, that name, you're going to see why that was important to change in just a second. So let's go ahead and open all of these things back up. We got it right here. Great. So what we're going to do is we are going to type in uh, Python. This is me on a PC, M Spacey. So calling the Spacey library. And I'm going to run the inline command package. Package is going to take uh, two arguments the the item that you want to package so the model in this case it's going to be models backslash um, the latin test and the location that you want to drop it into i want to drop it into package underscore models so let's go ahead and do um, models backslash we're going to say latin test and we want to drop it into package underscore models i'm separating arguments with just a space that's very important separate your arguments with a space when you run that, you should see everything kind of pop or running in your command line. It's grabbing the model right now, and you see that it has successfully, you can read this data right here, it's loaded the metadata.json file. That's the file that has all the metadata, and that tells it what not only what name it's going to have, but also what language it's going to have. In this case, it's being parsed with English, and it's also going to have the version 0.0.1. So that means that now we can follow these steps right here but we have to go to the directory where the model sits. The model should be sitting now in our packaged models. And in fact, we see it there now. That was a blank folder a second ago. So we need to get to this directory. There's a couple different ways you can do this. You can use CD, CD and go all the way down. Uh, but as you can tell, this is now a, um, uh, look, it's, it's structured a little bit differently. So what we need to do is we want to run this setup.py file right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to this folder first. So we're going to go to uh, CD uh, packaged models, and we're going to go to that right there. That should get us into that directory. Now we're sitting right here. I'll maximize it a little bit so you can kind of follow along with what's happening. 
And now we're going to run this bit of code right here, this Python setup.py sdist. What that's going to do is it's going to actually create a packageable Python library. And now if you open up the DIST folder, you'll see this right here. This is now something that can be pip installed. So what we want to do now is we can say cd, we can say cd uh, dist, so change directory. We're going to go into dist now, and I can run this file. So I can say pip install, copy it in, and make sure if you're on Windows that it's .tar.gz. You might not see that, but that is there because I don't have the file extensions shown. And now it's pip installing this. And here's what's really cool. If I go now to my site packages, I can go down and it'll be it's alphabetical, EN Latin SM. And there you have it. That's how you install a package library. Now, here's where the problem falls for things that have custom factories. I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what's going to happen when we try to package our Holocaust model, which I'm going to close this because we don't need that anymore. We're going to do the same thing now, except we're going to be working with the Holocaust model and trying to package it. The problem is the Holocaust model has two functions, en underscore narrow and person underscore narrow. These are custom factories. Let me demonstrate why this is uh, important uh, to understand. So we're going to try to run NLP to disk, which was the Holocaust NER. We're going to try to run Holocaust NER. And to make this consistent, I'm going to create a folder called models. And that's where I'm going to drop Holocaust NER. And if you notice, it's right there underneath my models folder. Now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to try and run models backslash holocaust ner so i'm going to have it run across that text and what you're going to get is an error right now so if i run this it'll take it a second but we'll have an error and this is the error that you're going to see can't find factory for en narrow if i were to have a factory for en narrow you would see that there is no factory for a person narrow why does this error occur this error occurs because Spacey doesn't have the built-in functions for handling the custom functions that we developed. Each function, each pipe, NER, for example, an NER pipe, goes to a pre-installed set of instructions in Spacey. Without instructions for how to handle a pipe, Spacey models don't know what to do and they return a factory doesn't exist error. Have no fear, this is a little difficult if you're scouring the internet. I spent several days trying to figure it out, and I want to thank Mike in particular, you know who you are, for helping me. I also want to thank Ennis from Spacey, whose blog on the subject helped, and there's also a few things on Stack Overflow that helped me as well. I'm going to give you all this in the link in, or in the description down below, so you can go to the documentation and the forums where I found my answers, but I will walk you through it step by step, and hopefully show you how we can overcome this very common error. So what are we going to do? Well, let's go ahead and open up a directory for this one as well. We're going to follow some similar, some similar steps. So I'm going to open up my, uh, oh, didn't mean to do that. There we are. I'm going to open up this on one side, zoom in. And I'm going to go back from package models because I don't want to be in package models. And there we are. So we got Holocaust NER right there. So we're going to follow the initial same steps right now. What we're going to do is we're going to open up command prompt in this directory. If you don't want to do that, you can always use CD and navigate to the directory. Let's zoom in once again, just so you can kind of see everything. And we are going to do just like we did before, Python M spacey package the input directory. So models backslash Holocaust in ER backslash Holocaust in ER. And I'm going to, for the purposes of this demo, because I've already done this for this model, uh, I'm going to make a new folder. We're just going to call this uh, blank. And that's going to be where I drop this new model. So we're going to say uh, blank is where I want to drop it. And everything should look the exact same. It's going through. It's grabbing the metadata. I've already changed the metadata. It's en underscore holocaust underscore sm001. We go into here. And in fact, it's now created. It's at this stage that we need to start uh, doing something a little bit different. We don't want to um, set up the dist yet. And the reason why we don't want to set up the dist yet is because if we do, none of the functions are going to be preloaded into the init file. 
and that's what we need to edit. So let's go back into our atom for just a moment, and we're going to do just two simple steps. We are going to go to our blank folder, open up our model, and we are going to go into uh, the model right here, and this init.py file is what we're going to be editing. So what this is, is this is what uh, is prompted when it loads up. Now, there are a few things that we need to do to make sure that this init file works correctly. And I'm going to kind of just copy and paste them over from something I have pre-prepared. So I'm going to copy and paste this over and then walk you through what's happening. So let me zoom out just a little bit so you can kind of see both side by side. So if you notice, my init file over here is bringing in a bunch of extra libraries. And it's got a bunch of extra stuff. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste it over. So what this is doing is it's actually creating the factories necessary. I'm going to close that now. There we go. It's creating the factories necessary for uh, the uh, in the spacing model. So here we go. This is coming from Ennis's forum. So we actually are creating a new class right here, which is going to be person narrow. And if you follow this format, which is what I followed, everything will work very smoothly. On the forums, though, it's not entirely clear initially where you're supposed to put the functions. If you create a special class, you call the class, you call the doc object, you give it the name, and then you have a uh, function call. And this function call is where you're going to just copy and paste your uh, your um, your functions. So instead of having a separate function in here, you're going to put it underneath def call with two arguments, self and doc. If we go back to our demo, or sorry, our uh, pipeline creation, you'll notice that these are the exact same functions that we created right there from line 52 down to uh, down to 67. That's what the init file now looks like. Once you have the init file in this format, and again, I'm going to give it to you on, uh, on the GitHub repo. Once you have it in this format, now comes the time to actually package it. And so we're going to follow the exact same steps as before. We are going to do uh, CD. I, where did I put it? I think I put it in blank. All right. So we're going to go CD. Uh, we are going to go blank backslash that. And that's going to drop us in that directory. I'm happy now. And we're going to run the exact same thing we saw before. Python uh, M or Python setup setup dot pi s dist and that's going to grab that s dist folder now here's what's interesting this is where this is going to look a little bit different let's once again return to adam just for one second so you can see what is now different so this is our dist this is our tar that we can actually look at and if we look, click on the init file in it we see that it's got our custom functions now here's what's really cool is now all i have to do is i can distribute this and I, or I could just do pip install. Oh, I got to change to the s dist, cd dist. And now once I'm in dist, I can do pip install. And I've already got it installed on my computer. Uh, but what's cool here is now what I can do, it's pip installed successfully. Great. I'm happy. Is I can go back to that same thing, the demo. And I can run it now because it's pip installed. And if I run this now, I'm not going to get a factory error. And the reason I'm not getting a factory error is because I now have those factories built into the spacey model. In fact, let's go ahead to site packages, scroll down to E in Holocaust SM. And here's the init file. I'm going to open it up with uh, the standard IDE in Python. And you see that the init file looks completely different. The init file now has those classes and special functions. So that's how you package a simple Python or a simple spacey uh, model where you're using standard factories. And that's how you package a model that has custom factories or custom functions and classes built into it. That's going to be it for this video. And in fact, that's probably going to be the end of this NER series for a while. I'm going to be doing a medieval Latin NER in a little bit, but I want to start turning the channel away from NER 
and towards topic modeling. If you are doing NER and you found this series helpful, let me know. Let me know on Twitter, uh, WJB underscore Mattingly. Let me know in the comments. And if there's something that you want to see on this channel moving forward, I am more than happy to do it. The next few videos are going to be on end-to-end uh, -end workflow for topic modeling. From gathering data to the different methods to the different libraries in Python and kind of some real-world examples. And I think we will stick with this Holocaust in Latin uh, topic modeling moving forward. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below.